Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about a new sunscreen from the outset and this is called Hydra Sheer and this is a sunscreen that is really 100% mineral. It does not have any chemical sunscreens in it and it also does not have any sunscreen boosters in it. And I have been being really impressed with this particular product. I think that it has been performing really well for me and that in general I think that of all the sunscreens that I have tried so far that this is the one that I I am liking the most so I'm kind of excited about it and in general I also am a big fan of the outset so this is a skincare brand that is from Scarlett Johansson that does focus on products that are not irritating and that are meant to be really gentle for the skin and to help to bring the skin back into balance after it has been irritated and I have had really good luck with really almost all of their products and so I was really happy to see that they were bringing out this sunscreen and I am really happy at how well it has been working for me. So first a little bit of information about me. I am 59 years old and I do have dry and sensitive skin and I've never had any kind of cosmetic procedures like injections or surgery and I'm not really intending to ever do that and so one issue that I have with both foundations and sunscreens is that many of them do settle into the wrinkles and fine lines on my face and make me look worse and so that is something that I'm paying particular attention to when I try out various sunscreens. In addition, my skin is very easily uh, irritated by various products and the one that I found that was has been almost the most irritating thing that I've done to it has been a variety of chemical sunscreens including these sunscreen boosters. So sunscreen boosters are actually chemical sunscreens but they are ones that have never been uh, submitted for regulatory approvals so you will not see the idea that they are uh, actually giving an SPF to the product on their own but they are very frequently added to mineral sunscreens to help the companies to both jack up the SPF and also to uh, reduce the amount of zinc oxide or titanium dioxide in it. And so I don't have a problem with that. I think it's fine and that companies can put whatever they want in sunscreens. And I also think if people want to use chemical sunscreens that that is perfectly fine. But I do find it to be problematic that these companies are labeling their products as being 100% mineral sunscreens when they actually do have these chemical sunscreens in them. And so therefore I'm, I'm very frustrated at the fact that it took me such a long time to figure this out even though I am really ingredient focused. And so I am uh, hoping that by focusing on this issue myself on this channel, more people may be able to find some real mineral sunscreens that do work for them if that is what they are interested in doing. And in general, there are a number of other ingredients that are in products that also are irritating to my sensitive skin. And in some cases, sunscreens also contain some of these other ingredients such as synthetic fragrances or parabens or some of the other things on this list. And I know that uh, there are many other people that are reactive to these types of ingredients as well. And so I just don't talk about any products with those ingredients on this channel. Now a third issue that I have had that makes me less likely to want to wear a sunscreen on a regular basis is because many of them do contain silicones. And I do not feel that silicones are directly irritating to my face themselves. I think that they're fairly inert. But I do think that if I wear a silicone-based foundation or a silicone-based sunscreen on a regular basis, that that does cause my skin quality to decline. And I think that the reason for that is because the silicones put kind of a tight barrier on my face. And therefore, that various... Uh, issues such as dirt and oil and dead skin cells and uh, fungi and other things that I don't really want on my face get trapped on there and that eventually that kind of muck does turn into uh, some kind of an irritation for my skin. And I do try really hard to remove all of the silicone products that I use at the end of the day and I find that I am mostly able to do that depending on how water resistant they are. But that really, I think it's uh, just having that stuff on my face even all day is really not the greatest thing. So therefore, I try to limit my use of silicone-based products, including silicone-based foundations, uh, to occasional use rather than something that I'm using all the time.
So therefore, with all of these considerations, I'm really happy that the outset is doing a really good job at addressing all of them. So again, it doesn't have any chemical sunscreens in it or sunscreen boosters. There's no fragrance. There's no parabens. Uh, and in general, I think that the ingredient list for this is really, really good, much better than most of the products that I find that are labeled as clean beauty. And then in addition, there's no silicones in this. I haven't found it to make my wrinkles look worse. It actually has some skincare ingredients in it that I think are actually good for my skin. And so my skin does seem to do okay with this on it on a regular basis. And I've used this for a number of days so far and it's been doing great. And I do feel like this product holds up pretty well on my skin when I wear it outside, if I'm exercising or even if I'm sweating. But I do feel like this is a product that I've been able to get off pretty easily at the end of the day. So in general, I do feel like this is really checking all the boxes of what I was looking for when I started my search for looking for sunscreens. And so therefore, of the ones that I've found so far, this is the one that I think I'm most likely to use. So before I get into more details about the outset, I thought that I would just talk a little bit about the concept of sunscreen boosters. So I have been developing some lists of all of the sunscreens on the market that I could find that seem to have potential as meeting my criteria in terms of not including the ingredients that I'm trying to avoid. So I have put all of these sunscreens on several pages that I will put up on the screen so that you can screenshot them if you are interested in checking back on them those. So these are products that do not include any chemical sunscreens. They do not include any sunscreen boosters. They do not include any synthetic fragrances. They don't include any parabens. And then on these initial pages, I also made mention of whether or not these products do or do not contain nano zinc or nano titanium dioxide. And in addition, I listed on these pages whether these products do contain uh, essential oils or other processed natural fragrances. Now, a couple of months ago, I did a full video where I just talked about the concept of sunscreen boosters, and I gave a lot of general information on that topic. And I actually have put all of the sunscreen videos that I am making on a playlist that is called SPF products. And so you should be able to find all of that information really easily. So now let's talk about these sunscreen boosters. So these sunscreen boosters are actually chemical sunscreens that are very similar in all respects to the chemical sunscreens that have been approved by the government, but these are ones that have never been submitted to regulatory agencies. And so therefore they can't be labeled as sunscreens themselves on the containers. And if you have only these sunscreen boosters in the products, then you can't be labeling something as a sunscreen. And so what companies do is they are adding these sunscreens to mineral sunscreens in particular, because if you put a chemical sunscreen and you mix it in with the mineral sunscreen and you make like a hybrid, then you can get a much higher SPF and you also can have the product behave a little bit better on the skin. So the most popular of these sunscreen boosters that is on the market that is present in a really large number of the mineral sunscreens is called butyloctyl salicylate or BOS. And the chemical structure of this is almost identical, researchers say, to the structure of the approved chemical sunscreen, which is called octosalate. And then the other ones that are on the market that I have actually seen in products include tri tridecyl salicylate, which is very similar to both BOS and octosalate. And then there is one that is called ethyl ferulate, which is in, I have seen in a few products, including, for instance, the Kosis Revealer Foundation. And then there is one that is called DESM, which I've also seen in a couple products. More recently, I do think it's become much more understood that these are actually chemical sunscreens. And for instance, the per paper that was most persuasive to me is one that was run last summer of 2023 in a journal called the Journal of Investigative Dermatology by a team of dermatologists and PhD researchers, uh, several of whom were on the faculty of Harvard Medical School. And what they have found in that study was that they did some experiments on, uh, using butyloctyl salicylate and ethyl ferulate. 
And what they found is that in both of those cases, these products acted exactly like chemical sunscreens. So they were absorbing UV light, and specifically they were absorbing UVB light, but not UVA1 light. So this is very similar to almost all of the chemical sunscreens that are on the market. And in addition, these are sunscreens that are absorbed into the body uh, in the same way that chemical sunscreens are. And in addition, of course, they have very similar chemical structures. And now when I hear from some dermatologists and other people that are knowledgeable about this topic, they are making it clear that they believe that these are really just chemical sunscreens. So for instance, just the other day, I took a look at a video from a couple of dermatologists on YouTube uh, on a channel that is called Doctorly, which does have a pretty big profile. And on that particular channel, those doctors did bring up the idea that one of the top, one of the sunscreens that they were including in their mineral category, because that's how it was labeled, then they said, actually, this is not a mineral sunscreen because it does have the butyloctyl salicylate in it. And so therefore we really, uh, this is not a real mineral sunscreen after all. And by the way, the one that they did recommend that is a pure mineral sunscreen, this is from a company called Biosense. This one is brand new on the market also, and so I had already picked that one up. So uh, I'm interested in taking a look at this one. Now, one thing that I like to do in these videos is just to talk a little bit about my own strategy for protecting myself and in particular, my face from the sun. So I do think that that is something that is really important. So the main thing that I have been doing whenever I am out in the sun at all, even for a couple of minutes, is to wear a hat that is particularly sun protective. And almost always the ones that I am wearing are from a company that is called Sunday Afternoons. This is not a company that I have ever had any kind of relationship with except as a customer. I don't even have an affiliate link for them. But I do really, really like their hats, and so I have a whole collection of them. And this is SPF 50 material, and then I also choose one that has a wide brim. And so even if I'm going to be going outside just for a couple minutes, I still put a hat on, and I think that that's really, really important. And then in addition, I do spend at least an hour or two outdoors per day walking my dogs on the hills up here in the upper Midwest. And I do think that, uh, I think that's really important to continue to get out during the summer months, but I mostly try to do that either when the sun is uh, almost ready to set or when it's first thing in the morning. And it's, it's cooler during those periods of time also, but it's also the case that the sun is much less bright then, and so therefore the sun that I'm getting on my face is much uh, less intense. And if I do need to go outdoors during the midday hours, then I do always wear my hat again. And I do try to shake, seek out shade in addition to that. Another thing that I do that I think is really important is that I am not using any kind of retinol and I'm also rarely using anything that has something like AHAs in it. Now, another thing that I have seen in the literature is the idea that certain components of the diet can help the skin to be protected from sun, and in particular, things like omega-3 oils and uh, certain kinds of produce, and those are things that I do include in large amounts in my diet, and so I think that that might be helpful also. And of course, having a skin barrier that is not very intact, and especially having irritated skin, is makes your skin a lot more susceptible to the sun. And so that is the thing that I have focused on the most, is to increase my skin barrier and to keep my skin from being irritated at all by anything. But now that I have found that there are some sunscreens on the market that I may be able to use without their irritating my face, then that has made me more interested in them, at least for some occasions when I am getting a significant amount of sun. So let's talk now about The Outset. So this is a company that was founded by Scarlett Johansson, and it currently is offering, I think, 11 different skincare products. So I found out about this company just before it launched, which I think was in March 2022 
because Scarlett Johansson did an interview with Bobby Brown, who has her own company called Jones Road now. So they did like a uh, video interview and the sound was totally messed up on that interview. And so I'm not sure that anybody watched it besides me, but I really was impressed with Scar Scarlett Johansson in this interview in terms of how she talked about the products and about what her explanation for why she founded the line. So what I learned about Scarlett Johansson from this interview and then what I read about her in other interviews that I've read is that she was interested in trying to find things to help her sensitive skin for well over uh, 10 years before she actually started this company. And I did find an article with her uh, talking about these issues back in 2013. So I think that that is actually absolutely true. And what she said is that for her work, she would have to use a lot of different makeup products and that they would irritate her skin. And so her goal has become to try to get her skin to get back into balance really fast. And at first, what she was instructed to do by a variety of people or what she tried to do on her own was to use products like retinol to try to uh, sort of force it into submission and that, that didn't work at all. But when she started to use certain kinds of ingredients that were very, very uh, gentle on her skin, that her skin started to do much better. And that was exactly my experience as well. And especially after I started to try out different kinds of products uh, when I was trying to learn about various products for this channel, that my skin uh, became very reactive also. And so after a while, I really learned what kinds of ingredients to avoid in, order, in my skin care in order to take care of my skin and not irritate it further. And what I did find when I looked at the Outset's products is that the ingredients that they were using are ones that my skin tended to do quite well with also. So I was really impressed with the ingredient list as soon as I saw it. And so I purchased the, a bunch of the products, everything that they were offering at the time the day that the company launched, and I have just been super, super happy with all of them ever since then. So therefore, I really think this is, as everyday skincare goes, I really think this is my favorite. I'm still using the Augustinus Buttercream, and I do think that in terms of providing uh, healing benefits to my skin from, these pep from this particular peptide, I think that has been helpful. But other than that, I do really, really like these Outset products. So apparently Scarlett Johansson spent a lot of time trying to figure out which products did work on her skin and she had a really solid skincare regimen in place and then when the pandemic came around she started thinking more seriously about actually starting a skincare line and so she hooked up with a woman whose name is Kate Foster who had CEO type experience in the beauty of type business and then they brought on a marketing person who had worked for some beauty companies and they went forward with the company with with the idea of exact knowing what kinds of products they wanted and they looked at a lot of different options in terms of who to work with and what she said was that she was uncomfortable with a lot of these bigger cosmetic beauty type companies because they really kind of wanted to do things the way they wanted to do them and she had her own concepts of how she wanted the company to run. So they got funding from an organization that is called the Najafi Company which says that its mission is to do well and to do good and to partner with world-class entrepreneurial teams. So their headquarters is in New York City, and about a year after the company had launched, I read an article where a reporter went to visit them and that there were still just, I think, seven employees in the company, and Scarlett Johansson was in the kitchen washing the dishes after a team meeting. So I feel like she's very, very hands-on with this company, and she is taking it seriously. And so I think that that is also consistent with my experiences, is that this is not a company that is just designed to capitalize on the celebrity's name, and that she really does have a, a real mission with regard to creating these particular products and that that is why the products actually are really better for me than really almost anything on the market. I really do think these are outstanding products and that they do deliver what they say that they are doing, which is that if you do have sensitive skin and your skin is messed up, that this is a reliable uh, line of products to turn to that is going to help to fix the problem uh, quickly rather than making it worse.
And at first, I think they just launched at Sephora and on their own website, but they are in a bunch of other places now. So they're selling directly through Amazon. So if you see products on Amazon, they're actually a real products. Uh, they're also at Nordstrom and on the Goop site and uh, Cold Beauty. And they're on QVC, and their CEO is actually in some of the the. QVC videos, and there's one product right now that is a cold cream that is only available on QVC. So I did just order that, so I'm used, to, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that is like. And the other thing that I think is the case with this line is that, especially considering the ingredient list, I think that the price point is fairly reasonable. So I do think that the list of the ingredients that they don't include, that that is a really impressive list. I mean, it's impressive both in terms of how long it is, and it's also specifically impressive to me because I feel like I'm in real agreement with them in terms of what things they are putting in their products and what things they are leaving out. So it's obviously going to be the case that if you want to have a commercial product, that in some cases you're going to have to put some preservatives in it. And so it's not everyone is going to be able to tolerate these products. But I think that I was really surprised at how well my skin was able to tolerate all of these products. And I also think that they are putting an awfully lot of really high quality ingredients in there that other companies are, I'm not really seeing too often in other companies' lists. And I think they're putting a variety of them in there, and I think that my skin does respond well to those. And that is the case with the sunscreen as well as their other products, that they are putting some good-for-you ingredients into the sunscreens as well as leaving out the bad stuff. And then in addition, for those who find this to be important, it is vegan, it's nut-free, it's sweet-free, and it's obviously cruelty-free. And in terms of availability, these products are shipped by Credo to many different countries. It is not the case that you can get the sunscreen anywhere other than the U.S., though. And then one more thing that I noticed about their website and their ingredient lists has to do with the squalene and the hyaluronic acid that they are using. So generally speaking, and especially more and more, those products are generated by using microorganisms that have been genetically engineered in order to ferment other ingredients into those. So with many companies now where they are getting their squalene is through these bioengineered microorganisms that are fermenting sugarcane. And for the hyaluronic acid that can come from the other genetically modified organisms that are fermenting wheat. And it seems to me that the outset made a really conscious decision to avoid those kinds of those products. So with the squalene that is coming from olives, now there are other companies that are generating squalene from olives, but that is a more expensive source. And then instead of the hyaluronic acid, they are using a compound that they are calling hyaluroset. And this comes from the seeds of the cassia flower. And I think that this is their logo. And this is, um, I think, what I can, this is a cassia flower on here. Whether this matters, I am not sure. At the beginning, when I found out that this is how all this squalene and hyaluronic acid that is being put in so many different products was being manufactured, that did concern me a little bit. But it also is the case that I have used many, many of these products over time, and I don't feel like my skin has reacted negatively to those particular ingredients, depending on what else is in the products. But I think I feel a little bit better about how the outset is doing it. And I don't mind paying extra for this product compared to what I might pay for some products on the market just because my skin does like them so much. So let's talk briefly about all of the products from the outset and my experiences with those and then I will move on to talking about the sunscreen. So the first one that I have found to be really terrific is the Outset Nourishing Squalene Daily Moisturizer. So this is a moisturizer that does have a lot of squalene and it has that hyaluroset in it. And it also has uh, some smaller amounts of really high quality oil, so I don't feel like it's greasy on my skin, and I do think it performs really well. But my skin also does really seem to like it a lot. 
And I find that this is a fairly lightweight moisturizer, but nonetheless, even during the winter, I often will just mix this with some additional oils and uh, put that on my skin. And so instead of using a night moisturizer, I think this works perfectly fine for that if I just uh, soup it up a little bit. So the second product that the Outset considers to be their core is their Firming Vegan Collagen Prep Serum. So another product that I use almost all the time is some kind of a hyaluronic acid type of a serum, and this is basically that same concept. But it also has the collagen in it, and it has a few other ingredients in it. And I don't know if this is better for me than just a regular hyaluronic acid serum, but I do think that this has been a, a very nice product and I've bought several bottles of this already also and used them up. And I do see that it has an ingredient called polypeptide 1 in it. And so since I started to use the Augustinus Buttercream, which has a particular proprietary peptide in it, I do feel like that's been helpful to me, and I've been a little bit more of a believer in peptides in general since then, and so that is one thing I do look for on ingredient lists is whether or not it has peptides. And then the third product that they consider part of their core of products is the Gentle Micellar Antioxidants Cleanser. And so this is a gel cleanser, and uh, a lot of the time I really prefer a cream-based cleanser, and that's probably still the case. But I do think that for the summer months when my skin is less dry, and it also tends to be a little bit more sweaty even when I'm not wearing any makeup, that this is a very nice cleanser for that period. And I think this is the kind of cleanser that really anyone can use and that it should be um, appropriate for a wide variety of skin types. I think that compared to most of the gel type cleansers that I've used, I've liked this one a much better. This is slightly foamy, but not real foamy, and it doesn't have any surfactants in it or any of the ingredients that I think are in, in many cleansers, including supposedly clean cleansers that do irritate my skin. I think that this really hasn't been irritating for me at all, and that I do think it does a nice job of removing uh, really my basic makeup anyway. Now, I do think that if I'm wearing a heavier silicone type of a makeup or anything that's supposed to be waterproof, that I tend to do better when I'm using some kind of an oil-based balm or an oil-based cleanser of some kind. But I think that this works better than, than you might think. And I do think that this does, for instance, a good job removing the outset uh, sunscreen. So they say that it should be doing that, and it actually, I think, has worked pretty well for me removing that sunscreen. And then for those three products, they do have refills available. So the refills just come in a container like this. So they're a little bit less expensive on a per ounce basis. And I guess this is slightly better for the environment, although this is a glass jar. And so I kind of am uh, positive about the idea of it coming in glass rather than this, this plastic casing. Uh, what, but what I mostly feel like is that transferring this product into this container. It, it was pretty messy. And then the next product is called the Ultra Light Moisture Boosting Oil. And what I immediately noticed about this product is that it is very different than almost all the other oils that I have used. And the reason for this is that I think that most of the ingredients actually are not oils per se. They are more laboratory uh, type of ingredients that are really helping it to provide sort of a tacky finish to the skin that I think actually serves pretty well as a primer for makeup. So that was definitely a surprise because usually if I put oil on my skin, then that does not work well with makeup at all. And so the main ingredients in this product, the first one is caprylic capric triglyceride, which is a fatty acid, which is usually produced from either coconut or palm oil and glycerin. And then there's squalane, and squalane is an oil that my face usually does like pretty well, and again, that's olive oil derived. And then there's one that's called hydrogenated ethyl hexyl olivate. That is made from olives, and it is actually stated as being an alternative to silicone. And then diheptyl succinate, that one is synthesized from succinic acid and is also stated as being an alternative to silicone. And then is jojoba oil, and that is 
that is an oil, but it is a very light oil and it tends to be one that my face will absorb a lot faster than many of the other oils that I've used. And then this does have a few other really high quality oils, but in much smaller quantities. And it also has that hyaluronic complex in it. So now that I look at the ingredient list, it does make some sense to me why people would be thinking that this might be a a uh, oil that might work well under makeup and I do think that my face has reacted really well to it it hasn't been irritated by it and this has been something that I have been able to add to either their moisturizer or other companies moisturizers and that I think that it has worked very nicely and I don't get the kind of greasy feeling that I usually do with other oils so I'm not saying that having that greasy feeling on my skin is always a bad thing. Sometimes I think it can be a really good thing, but sometimes it's something that I would rather not have around all the time. And then there's another product that is called the Smoothing Vitamin C Eye and Expression Lines Cream. And this has a sorbyl glucoside in it, which is a gentle form of vitamin C. It also has their hyaluronic complex in it, some Irish moss, and then Centella Asiatica, which is go-to cola, which is sort of like caffeine. So I do often really like using caffeine, especially in my eyes or on my face in general, because I think that it decreases puffiness, and so I think this go-to cola is probably doing the same thing. I did go through one bottle of this. I thought that it was fine. I don't necessarily feel like I'm all that uh, hard up for finding a good eye cream. I think that most companies, they don't put a lot of preservatives or other problematic ingredients in eye creams, and they tend to put uh, some of the more active and positive ingredients like the peptides or whatever in, in night creams or things like Bacuchiol, which is a retinol substitute. And so they charge more for eye creams than they do for day creams, but I tend to find eye creams to be so useful for me that I sometimes use them on my whole face. So I haven't found it necessary to rebuy this one, but I think that it is a nice cream. And then the next product is called the Outset Restorative Niacinamide Night Cream. So this is a thicker cream that is designed to use in the evening hours. It has evening primrose oil, niacinamide in it. Uh, one thing that I did notice about this is that it has a peptide in it that is called trifluoroacetyl tripeptide 2, which is supposed to be anti-aging and firming. But it also has a trace, apparently they say, just a trace of Teflon in it. I don't feel that I reacted to this product, and I have reacted very, very badly to other products that have had Teflon in them. So I do think that my skin does not like Teflon at all. But in this case, I was able to use this cream. So I did use up most of this jar, and I felt like it was okay. I... Toward the end, I felt like I was becoming less enthusiastic about using it, and so I did use up some of it on my hands. Uh, one thing about this, in addition to whether or not it might be problematic in terms of that ingredient, I did find that depending on what I put on under it or with it, that it had this little bit of a tendency to pill, which is kind of unusual for me to find in a night cream. And so therefore that was another reason why I wasn't real enthusiastic about it. So I haven't purchased it again, and I don't know if I would purchase it again, but I'm not saying there's anything specifically wrong with it, and I did use up the whole jar. And then this is called the Exfoliating Caffeine Micro Polish. So this is a physical exfoliant, and it has a very small particles of the physical exfoliant in it that are called perlite. And these are uh, supposed to be spherical, so they're supposed to not have the rough edges, so they're supposed to be more gentle on your skin. I have not found in general that I have used physical exfoliants very frequently, except that I do uh, periodically use them on my hands, especially during the winter months. And so I've used this uh, occasionally on my face, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with using it on my face. Uh, I think that on my hands it worked perfectly fine, and I haven't had any problems with this. So I might buy it eventually if I use up this tube of it. 
And then this is a balm that is called the Botanical Barrier Rescue Balm. And it comes in this nice metal tin and it has this picture of their logo on it and it's raised. So I think that that's actually quite high quality and attractive. And it is just a balm like this. So the first ingredient in this is jojoba oil. And then it also has some meadow foam oil, some rosehip oil, some marula oil, and then a variety of waxes and other balm type ingredients. So I haven't always done all that well with a lot of balms, so some of them I find to be a little bit on the greasy side. And then some of them that I think I would like uh, tend to put a lot of essential oils in them and they do irritate my skin. So I'm thinking especially of the Jones Road Miracle Balm here. That is a product that I would really like to be able to use in general, but that that one has both rose geranium oil and ginger oil and a bunch of other oils in it. This product does have a little bit of a lemon scent in it. So it does have lemon essential oil, lemonine, linalool, and rosemary oil. And I don't feel like it has been irritating to my face, certainly not in the same way that the Jones Road product has been. I think that the amount of oils that they put in the product are fairly low. And I don't think that it, it feels really greasy on my skin. So I think that if I want to use this as a rescue type of a balm on things like dry uh, parts of my knees or on my feet, things like that, that it's pretty nice. And I think that I can use it on my face in the way that people would use the Miracle Balm, that it does act as a little bit of a glowy type of a highlighter. And it's kind of not necessary for me to put that on right now because I have to turn off the air conditioner while I am making these videos and then it gets pretty hot and then my face is already kind of glowy. But I'll put a little bit of this on anyway. I think it uh, works perfectly fine on my face, even when I'm sweaty apparently. So I think this is a very nice product. I think it's worked fine for me. I think that if you use balms like this, this could be one that would be definitely worth trying out. And I, I think this container is super cute. I really do like that a lot. And then they have a mask that is designed for uh, pore issues or acne type issues. So this is called the Purifying Blue Clay Mask. And you are supposed to leave it on the skin for 10 minutes. And so they say that this is designed so that it doesn't dry out the skin and that it has natural blue clay, which is supposed to unclog and minimize the size of uh, pores, and that it has a radically minimal amount of salicylic acid in it and then the hyaluronic complex in it. So this is not the kind of product that I would generally ever use, but I did try this on my face. And then I managed to uh, fall asleep with it on my face for a couple hours. And I will say that my skin felt dried out when I uh, took it off, but I don't think it was super dry. And I think that it got back into balance immediately after I put moisturizer on it. I don't think it was irritating. And so I do think that if I had skin issues like that, that this could be a really good product to choose. And so I did just use that product a couple times and then I passed it on to someone else that I thought might be able to use it. And then the last product is a cold cream and this is available right now only on QVC. So I did watch a video with the CEO for the company where she talked about this product. And I do feel like cold creams can be good things for my face, both for makeup removers or else just as a really heavy duty moisturizer to leave on for a while. And this one also has um, what's called electric daisy in it, which is supposed to be a wrinkle redu reducer. And so I think that uh, I, I'm kind of excited about the idea of trying this one out. So I did go ahead and order that from QVC. And so I will report back uh, to you later on in terms of what I think of it. And now for the sunscreen. And so the sunscreen, the uh, website states, this elegant formulation offers natural SPF protection and hydration in a sheer fragrance-free lotion that absorbs easily, is safe for sensitive skin, and leaves no white cast. And I do think that all of these things, as far as I can tell, that they actually are true. Now it is the case that my own face is fairly light and so I cannot verify whether or not this this sunscreen would work really, really well in terms of disappearing on the skin of people with really dark skin. But I do feel like it 
it disappeared very quickly on my skin and that it didn't really leave any white cast at all. And so I think it might work pretty well for a variety of skin tones as well. And it comes in this plastic container, which I think would be fine to take around with you. I think it would actually fit really nice in like the pocket of a lot of bags and that the shape is, uh, this narrow shape is a good thing for that. It has a pump on it that has worked really well for me. And I think that uh, in terms of the container for it, I think it's actually quite nice. In terms of the ingredients, uh, some of the ingredients that it has in it that are supposed to be helpful to the skin, it's supposed to have antioxidant snow mushroom and then it has the botanical hydrators like the hyaluroset, ceramides, niacinamide, and then argan oil. And then it also has tocopherol acetate, which is synthetic vitamin E. And that is really high on the ingredient list, much higher than I have seen. Uh, really, tocopherol acetate usually being on the ingredient list. And I think that that is because this might be contributing a bit to the SPF protection in the product. And then it also has uh, some evidence that some of these other ingredients might have some UV protection including the green tea extract, the chamomile extract, which is also called bisabolol, uh, the allantoin, and uh, the niacinamide. And then it also has some fermented ingredients in it. So what I would say right off the bat, just looking at the ingredient list, is that this really has a lot of ingredients in it that are supposed to be skin care. And that most sunscreens, and I've looked at an awful lot of sunscreen ingredient lists, and most sunscreens do not include that kind of thing in them at all. So that is unusual in and of itself. And then the fact that it is free of all of the ingredients that I have found to be, to be irritating in other products, that is also really important to me. Now they say on the website that it is not nano zinc. And so I wondered what kind of zinc it was because it does disappear so easily into my skin. I'm wondering if this might be the same kind of zinc that, for instance, Lion Pose is using. It's from a company that is calling it Super Zinc. I wrote to the outset and I asked them if they could give me some more information in terms of what kind of zinc it was, but I haven't heard back from them in terms of that. So I have found that almost immediately after rubbing it into my skin that I am not seeing any kind of a white cast at all. It does take a little bit of time to dry, so especially if I've already put on moisturizer, it can take a while before I get to the point that I would be comfortable putting any makeup over the top of it. Otherwise, it tends to, the whole thing tends to take a lot of time to dry off. So if I'm going to put on makeup, that's the first thing that I want to suggest is that maybe putting it on and then waiting for five minutes even before putting on makeup might be a good idea. But in terms of disappearing onto my skin and not looking white, I think that it has worked out really well for me. But I do have pretty fair skin. And I have worn this sunscreen uh, maybe five or six times uh, for most of the day on most of those occasions. And I have found that it has been perfectly fine for me. It has not caused me any irritation that I have noticed. I think that my skin has been in pretty good shape when I have taken it off. I think that when I do go to take it off that I have been able to use a variety of cleansers. I have tended to use oil-based type cleansers that I would use to remove a stickier foundation for it. Uh, but I, as I said, the Outsets cleanser, which is just a micellar cleanser, that one has worked well for me also in terms of getting this off. So that has been a real plus compared to some of the other silicone-based products that I have tried that have been more difficult to get off without a really, really good cleanser. And I have worn this a number of times uh, when I have been outside and I have been sweating a lot. And I don't feel like it has caused me problems. I can't guarantee that my face has remained uh, perfectly covered by the product, but I do think that it has held up for me as far as I could tell pretty well in the sun, including when I've had foundation over the top of it. Now, my original thought in terms of trying out sunscreens was that I would just try them up without makeup and then report back on them. And then a while later, after I have figured out a few of them that I really liked, then I would do some more systematic experiments with makeup to see how they performed. But in this case, I liked this one enough that I decided to wear it on a number of occasions and try some other types of makeup over the top of it. 
And so I've tried some with silicone and some without silicone. For the silicone ones, I tried the Lisa Eldridge, her regular foundation, and her skin tint. And I also tried the Chantecaille, their new sunscreen tinted moisturizer that is called Just Skin. And then for the non-silicone products, I tried out the Hourglass skin tint, and I also tried mixing the uh, foundation from Euphoria with some of the Outset moisturizer, and I put that on. And I feel like all of those actually worked quite, quite well. And I didn't notice any pilling, and I feel like all of those products did hold up well for me after I put them on over this sunscreen, including for most of them when I was outside exercising. And I do think that in general that it's probably better for me if I don't start by putting a moisturizer on and then put this right over the top of it. I still feel like I generally moisturize my face as soon as I wake up in the morning, but I think that for this one it's really better just to put this one on my skin when my skin is fairly clear of moisturizer because otherwise it just takes a long time to dry. And eventually it gets to the point where it's okay even if I put it on over moisturizer, but it does go on pretty wet. Now, whether or not I will actually wear this underneath foundation, I don't know. I don't usually wear a foundation all over my face anyway on a regular basis. And when I do put on a foundation all over my face, I'm really doing that when I'm looking to look particularly nice for an occasion, but I have pretty good skin. So therefore, I tend to think that probably what I will do is continue to either use foundation or use sunscreen, but probably not use both of them at the same time. But I think that for people that are thinking that they do need to have a foundation all over their face, and if that is something that they want to do, that this could be one that I think would work well underneath foundations. And I certainly think that if I want to put this on and then put on things like blush or bronzer or things like that over the top of it, that seems to work perfectly fine too, of course. So in general, I am really impressed by this. I will continue to try it out over time, and I'll probably try it with some more of the foundations in my collection, so I can give you a more detailed report on that later on. But so far, I'm really, really impressed with this one, and I do imagine that I will get some more use out of this just for my own usage in addition to trying it out some more for this channel. So thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. And if there are any sunscreens that you have used that you have had good luck with them, then I would be really interested in knowing about that. In addition, if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, then I hope you will go ahead and do that. And Coco and I love you very much, so thank you very much for watching. Goodbye! Ba -da -ba -da -da -da. Dum dum.